Frances Harrison and her youngest sister, Elizabeth, wrote an account of what the entrance exam was like. On their first day, they gathered at 369 to 371 Oxford Road to take the entrance exam. On entering, the two sisters trotted upstairs and were met by a very stern looking mistress who took their name and their ages. To their surprise, they were separated and taken to different classrooms. Pens were bitten, fingers were inked, and then came the sun through the window and the headmistress came in. We have we have to, to learn all about gymnastics classes. In gymnastic classes, they wear uniform, and then when they were wearing it, it was so tight and heavy. And around the the bottom of it, it was puffy, and they had a something to hold it so it doesn't fall down and they had a belt on their, on their hips and they had to, to wear dresses and that's a uniform 
uh, and they had to wear boxes uh, on their heads and and they had to stretch their arms really far. And in one of them, there was the maple. The maple had lots of rainbow ribbons. We had to, to make the a plait around the bar and then it will make it beautiful. And then we had to, to stretch out and then stretch in and then make a like tie and then go in a circle and then the maple and then the maple will just go round and round and then we will put something to stop it going round and round so it can't fall over people. How our present gym students would laugh if they could have seen us standing in two long lines facing Miss M's assistants, whose movements we had to copy. We had chest expanders consisting of two handles joined with round elastic. Miss M was a very dignified figure, always well dressed in black silk or satin with a tight fitted bone bodice and black and white kid gloves. We were told to expand the arm girls now. We then had to march around the room. We were then told to stand in a big circle. Circle girls, now please. And then we had to curtsy. Curtsy girls, now. These days things are very different. Our teachers are much nicer. We play football, we play volleyball, we do gymnastics and our favourite tennis. learning about celebrations and parties at MHSG. Back in 1906 there was a party that started at 4 o'clock until 7 o'clock. After that they played party games such as Blind Man's Buff, Musical Chairs and Jake Hope were at that. Then they had delicious scones and jam for their afternoon tea. The girls danced the polka with the friend they had brought. They also acted out the Pied Piper of Hamelin. At four o'clock, we all arrived at the Christmas party. <laughs> and we were now bring a friend with us. The teacher handed out tea. So we had cucumber sandwiches, and cheese sandwiches, and shortbread, and fruit cake and Victoria sponge cake. Then we played some games. The first one was musical chairs. <laughs> And then, Jacob, where art thou? Jacob! And then we all danced the pole. 
cold cuff. Then it was time for our play, the Pied Piper of Hamlet. In year three, we have been learning about the school zoo in Dover Street. And Naomi from the Huntmere Theatre came to talk to us about the school zoo, which had lots of animals, like cats, rabbits, snakes, a few salamanders, lizards, and even some goldfishes. There was a snake. Um. The snake had a little thing where one day um, he escaped his cage but no one knows where he went. My most favourite interesting fact is that um, the two doves called Jack and Jill. They were there for to teach the girls biology and have a look at the animals and one of the most favourite animals there was called uh, was a toad and his name was Tommy. I really liked the school zoo because um, we all had different parts, we were grouped into different things and we did like lots of really cool things. Once upon a time in the school zoo there lived the Sand Lizards, the learning about boarding houses in Manchester High. The reason why in Manchester High we had boarding houses is because 
They thought that more students would come if they didn't have to go back and forth. We didn't actually start Manhai in this building. We started it in somewhere called Dover Street. We learned about how Connie and her friends used to like play pranks on each other and we had to like draw a picture of like what it would look like. We read Connie's diary from 1901. I loved knowing what they got up to and what mischiefs they did. We found that Connie had got her first conduct mark for spilling ink all over Fraulein, their German teacher, stress. Connie was there for three years. so sad and I miss you lots. I really want to go home. Now, please. I feel nervous and scared and I only have two friends, Muriel and Jenny. Dearest mother and father, I am hoping to make some friends but all the girls are just so <coughs> mischievous. The future is ghastly. Do you really expect to have sausages and mash and only dessert on Mondays. I want to fit in, but everyone expects me to be like them. Disgusting little brats. They expect me to go on ghost hunts, but I am a good girl, not a cheeky little twit. I really miss you. Why did I have to come? Your dearest, best, number one child. Dear mother and father, I'm splendid to tell you that I'm doing very well. It's a pity that you're not here, but I am hoping. My teachers are lovely, and I hope that brother is doing well at Manchester Grammar School. I can't wait to see you at half time. I miss you very much. Hope you're all well. In Year 5, we've been learning about the suffragettes and suffragists and how they linked to MHSG. We've learned that our second headmistress, Sarah Burstall, was a suffragist because if she was a suffragette, it would be a bad example for her students. In June 1913, the second headmistress, Sarah Burstall, went on a march with some of the students and teachers at MHSG. We learnt that Christabel, Sylvia and Adela Pankhurst all went to MHSG. Also, Sylvia was a talented artist and designed the sashes and badges for the WSPU. The sashes and badges that Sylvia designed had a meaning. Violet's loyalty, 
Green is hope and white is purity. They also represent a code. Green is give, white is women and violet is votes. This says give women votes. We established that a suffragette smashed windows and broke the law and suffragettes protested law abidingly. They did have a choice to go to prison or have a fine but they chose to go to prison to be heard and were determined that they were going to make a change. Millicent Fawcett started the suffragists and Emily Panker started suffragettes. Through hardship, battle and pain, the suffragettes and suffragists won. First, they got the vote for women over 30 who owned private property. Then all women over 21 could vote and they knew that they had achieved victory. I think you all should join the protest as you guys, when you grow up, you look back and say, wow, I helped all this woman and myself to get the right to vote. But why? We could get arrested or even worse, hurt. We're only young. We don't want to die yet. Please, Daddy, please let us go to the protest. Please. please. I shan't let you go. You'll be such a disgrace. Why can't you go? All her friends are aging. Okay, well, it's really not a big deal. Because she'll let down the family name. Please, sister, please, let us go. You can come with us. Come on. Come with you? I am insane. We could get her or seriously worse. Teachers of the school, so Miss Bingham, Miss Floyd, Miss Barley, and Miss Flaherty. Would you guys like women to get the right to vote? Yes, yes. Mrs. Jones. Well, then join the suffragists. A absolutely. absolutely. Miss Flaherty, Miss Bingham, and Miss Barley, I have something important to tell you. Yes. 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 I would like you to join the fight to get the right for women to vote. Yes, yes. Mrs. Burstall. Responsibility and bravery. You make a good point. I agree. I agree. I agree. I disagree. <laughs> Greetings to all. My name is Sarah Burstall, the second headmistress of MHSG. 
I believe that's crucial, that women should have the right to vote. In year six, we're learning about the bombing of our school. Did you know that our school was bombed? Manchester High School for Girls was originally at Dover Street, but the school was growing and Dover Street was becoming too small. They had already got a new school and had nearly finished furnishing the new school. Then the bomb hit. The bomb wasn't intentional, but after the Manchester Blitz, the aircraft was too heavy to fly back so they randomly dropped bombs to lighten the aircraft. Unfortunately, one of the bombs landed on our school. The headmistress at the time called all the teachers and they all tried to salvage as much as they could. Luckily, all the girls were at home because they were in their Christmas holidays. Senior school came back in 1949, but prep didn't come back until 1973. But my favourite interesting fact was that all the teachers had to give up their Christmas holidays to help the school. What? Daddy, can I have some of your food? I don't like mine. Mummy, can I have some of your food? I don't like mine. It's rations, darling. We can't afford anything else at the moment. But I don't like it. Our portions are smaller. Yours are way larger. We're much bigger than you do, though, darling. I'm not eating this. I'm not eating this as well. Oh, honestly. Ding dong! Go get the posted. We don't get to tea like this. Pinky up like this. Oh, am I being rebellious, mother? Ding dong! The post. Let's do it. No, come on to I'll just go down and get it. Oh. Okay, Lynn, smile. Let's go. Bombed. We need you to come back immediately tomorrow morning. You will miss your Christmas dinner and probably opening presents, but it is an emergency. Please come. Yours sincerely, Dr. Mary Clark. I need to phone Lily. Ring ring. Hello, who's this? This is Mary. The school has been bombed. What do you mean the school has been bombed? I don't know, just call Lily. Ring ring. been learning a lot about the evacuation. In September of 1939, Manchester High School for Girls was located on Dover Street in Manchester. 
Once war broke out, the headmistress, Dr. Mary Clark, did not deem the school to be safe, given its location in the city, and started preparations under orders for an evacuation. A kit list was sent out to parents, and when the day arrived, the girls were told to arrive at school with their suitcases and gas masks, wearing a label with the school number of 375. They did not know where they would be going or how long it would take. This particular day was scorching hot, and the girls had been instructed to wear full winter uniform so that they were rather uncomfortable as they walked behind Dr. Clark in crocodile formation to London Road train station. Unbeknownst to the girls, they had been evacuated to Leafy Cheadle Hume, a nearby village which at the time was considered the countryside and far safer than the city centre. Once at Cheadle Hume train station, the girls were allocated to their families they did not know and soon resumed lessons in the afternoon at Cheadle Hume School, a school for girls and boys, which was very unusual for them. Whilst they shared lessons and classrooms, most of the lessons for Manchester High took place in the afternoon and some of their art lessons took place place above a local village shop. Due to Tudor Hume being relatively close to places like Didsbury, where lots of the girls lived with their parents, some girls were able to go back to home with their families at the weekend. It is 1939 and Manchester High School for Girls will be evacuated. They have received a letter in the post from the headmistress saying that their children will be evacuated. Children are being evacuated. Where? It doesn't say. Children being evacuated. What's this? A kit list. I don't want them to go. I'll miss them. An evacuation. Children, there's going to be an evacuation. Light up. Hello, children. Our school number is 375. I'm going to give you all name tags, wear them at all times, do not lose them. We are now here at Chief of Hume. I will now pair you up with some host parents who will take care of you for now. This all happened in faster than expected. Dear Diary, did you ever think I'd be writing in Sunny Chilo Hume? Dear Diary, this morning was a normal morning until my mother received a letter saying I was going to be evacuated. Dear Diary, I don't think that I will even be able to explain the details of the events that happened yesterday. I shall try my absolute best. Dear Diary, I can't believe what is happening. Would you have ever thought that I'd be writing to you alone in a hot bumpy train with that mama and papa? Dear Diary, I never thought that this day would come. So much has gone by in the last 24 hours. Dear Diary, when I finally got in, it felt like we were sardines in a tin. Dear Diary, I was walking to school like a normal day, except it was more cloudy than usual. I didn't think much of it at the time until I got to school. We were at war. 